Unless you're the only one who's going to use that API you just designed, you really need to document your API to make it effective. In this episode, we're going to cover an overview of API documentation and set the stage for later episodes where we'll drill in more specifically to these details. So let's talk about why you should be documenting that API. There's typically two major reasons, two big goals we want to achieve. The first thing to consider is that a lot of the design decisions you made, a lot of the intricacies of your interface, aren't obvious to someone who wasn't involved in the whole design process. So there's an immediate learning curve for someone who visits your API for the first time. Our first goal is to reduce that learning curve. We're hoping that by providing effective documentation, we can make it much easier to learn how to use the interface and thus achieve two great results. The first is that we hope to drive adoption by making the API easier to understand. And the second is to reduce the time and effort involved to perform this integration in the first place. These two things can greatly help both public and private APIs. The second goal we're hoping to achieve is to reduce the amount of support effort for our API publishing staff. By providing enough documentation, effective documentation, not just for beginning users, but also for intermediate or advanced users, we hope to provide a self-service portal where developers can solve their own problems without having to rely on contacting the API publishers themselves. Now, obviously we need to supplement this with additional components and mechanisms, things like peer-to-peer -peer support, support communities, you know, having evangelists and support staff. But all of that should be secondary to the idea that the information should be present in the first place. We want to document the API effectively enough that developers can solve their own problems simply by reading the manual. There's two major types of documentation I want to discuss. The first is documentation that's targeted at machines or computers or systems. And the second type of documentation is one that's targeted towards human readers. So let's start by looking at machine-oriented documentation. Documentation built for machines or systems typically means defining a documentation for the interface itself, the nuts and bolts of the messages you need to send and where you need to send them to. We can see great examples of this documentation in the SOAP style world where we have WSDL defining a web service interface, or in the HTTP object style world with both Swagger and the Waddle specifications. These types of interface descriptors allow clients to programmatically create the scaffolding to build API clients, getting them well along their way. They also allow API publishers to build interesting components within their portal, things like an API explorer based on an interface description language like Waddle, or even allowing them to provide human facing documentation by quickly consuming, let's say, a Swagger specification and providing an API reference guide. All of these things are very effective because they help us reduce the learning curve, that key goal for API documentation. But unfortunately, what they don't provide is any context for documentation itself. They don't provide uh, a learning developer with the idea of how all these pieces go together or how the API works as a whole. For that, we need something more. We need human-facing documentation. Writing documentation for human readers allows us to fill in those gaps. Just like a well-designed API, we want to write documentation with our reader in mind. So this means we need to identify our target audience. For example, we should be able to identify different levels of reader expertise. Someone visiting our API for the first time will want to know what our API does and what architectural style it uses. Whereas someone who's been developing with our API for quite a long time will be interested in the rationale behind design decisions and they might have specific concerns around performance and scalability. The second thing we need to do is write in a style that will be familiar and consumable to our readers. And a big part of that is writing effective examples. Humans and developers in particular are excellent at learning by example. And that's why it's so important to use examples to provide effective documentation. There's three categories of examples we need to be concerned with. The first is the snippet. A snippet is a small piece of code or pseudocode or interaction that you provide to illustrate a concept you're describing in text. The second type of example is the tutorial. A tutorial provides a step-by-step -step walkthrough of either a complex concept or a task that you expect many of your developers to have to perform. And the third type of example is the application example. In an application example, you provide 
the source code for a full-blown client of your API, demonstrating how different calls might work together and the type of application you can build by leveraging your API. We typically see more snippets than tutorials and more tutorials than applications, and that's normal. So that's our whirlwind tour of API documentation. There's a few things you should really take away. One is that both machine-oriented documentation and human-oriented documentation are important, so the best solution is to combine them both. Document your API in the same way that you design great APIs. Do it with your user in mind. Those aspects of user-centered design and improving the developer experience fully apply here. And remember, if you're going through all the effort of building a great API, it really makes sense to go through the effort of building great documentation to go along with it.